Hello and welcome to the next series of videos. This time we're looking at the topic of logical operations. Where we'll be looking at a range of topics from truth tables for Boolean expressions to simplifying those Boolean expressions using Boolean identities. So let's begin. I suppose we should start by looking at the man himself. This is George Bull, Mr. Logic, and he was born in 1815 and died in 1864. Now you will grow to love him or hate him. George Bull was an English mathematician, educator, philosopher, and he basically studied the field of differential equations and algebraic logic. And if that's not hurting your brain yet, I don't know what will. Now I think it's time that John gives you some life tips. With logical operations, it's okay not to get this. You will get it. You may not understand it very quickly, but you will get it. Number two, it will drive you mad. You will go insane, but stick with it. Number three, practice, practice, practice. Whatever you do, you must master the foundations of Boolean algebra. Otherwise, there's no point in moving on. Number four, later on, when we look at Boolean simplification, you must stay organised. The only way to get marks here is to show the examiner you know exactly what steps to take in order to get to the solution. I just want you to take a look at this diagram for a second. Here you can see lots of different logic gates. Now you might not know what logic gates are at the moment, but I can promise you they are used in electronics, in computing, in physics, and it's important that we can simplify these logic gates down to make smaller circuits which are cheaper, faster, and don't produce as much heat. And if we can reduce the number of components needed, then it makes financial sense for everybody. Computers can get smaller and they can get faster. And these components I'm talking about are transistors. And transistors are very, very small, simple electronic switches which can control digital logic, which we're going to look at. And in a switch, you can have two options. You can have power on and power off. And this is the fundamental building blocks of our computer systems. So let's have a look at our big six logical operations that are described in our specification. We've got AND, OR, NOT, NAND, NOR, and XOR. Now there's no getting round this, people. You need to make sure that you know these. You need to learn them, you need to live them, and breathe them. I'm going to show you now the notation that comes along with the logic gates here, and I'm going to describe it and give you a truth table. So the logical operation AND. The notation for this is basically a full stop in between the two inputs A and B. Now the inputs don't always have to be A and B. Sometimes they can be X and Y, they, come, they can be any letter in the alphabet, but usually it's A and B and that's what I'm going to stick to. Now, because we're talking switches here, switches can be zero or one. Zero meaning off or false, and one meaning true or on. Now, in order to get true or one at the end of my logic gate, I need two inputs that are both one or true. So both inputs need to be true in order for the output to be true. So let's have a look at that in a truth table. A truth table is a way of demonstrating all of the different results, inputs and outputs, from my logic gate. Now you need to master the art of drawing truth tables, and in this truth table I have two inputs, A and B. Then in the end column I have got A and B using a notation of the full stop. Because A is a switch, and because B is a switch, A has two options. It has one or zero. One being on, zero being off and B also has on and off options as well. So I need to demonstrate every single different combination of on and offs of my switches in my truth table. So in the first row, I'll put zero, zero. In the second row, I'll put zero, one. The third row, I put one and zero. And in the fourth row, I'll put one and one. And that's every combination that my switches can be in. Now to actually and these two inputs together. So I need both inputs to be 1 in order for the output to be 1. So my truth table looks like that. 0, 0, 0 and 1. The only time I get 1 is when both of my inputs are 1. 
If you look at this diagram here, you'll see a representation of an AND gate. There's two switches, A and B. If you switch your switch on, you'll get power. If your switch is off, you'll receive no power. In the output, there's a light bulb there as well. So I just want to prove that our truth table is correct. If both switches are off, the light bulb is off. If A is off and B is on, your bulb will still be off. If your switch A is on and switch B is off, your light bulb will be off. And finally, both switches are on, your light bulb will have power and be on. So that looks to me like our truth table is correct and John is still in a job. Now looking at the OR logical operation, the symbol for this is a plus. So my two inputs A and B, there's a plus symbol in between them and that says A or B. So with an OR, at least one of my inputs must be true, OR1, for the output to be true, OR1. So looking at the truth table again, I'll put my A or B in the end column and then for each row I will fill them in 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. All the different combinations that my switches can be in. Now all we have to do is remember the rule. The rule was that one of my inputs must be a 1 for my output to be a 1. And that means I get 0, 1, 1, 1. Again, all I'm going to do is check my inputs and outputs. So both switches off, I get nothing. I turn switch B on. And because I've got a 1 there, my output is now lit up. If I turn A on, because I've got a 1 there, my output is on, and if both switches are switched on, then I have 1s both on A and B. So my light bulb lights up. That set of results seems to match with our OR truth table. The next one we're going to look at is NOT. It's very simple to draw this. All you have to do is put a line over the top of your input, and that is a knotted bar. This one's very straightforward. All you have to do is flip the input's value. So looking at the truth table for this, if my input was a zero, then I flip it to a one. If my input was a one, I flip it to a zero. And double checking that, if my switch is not switched on, then it flips the input and provides power to my light bulb. If I turn my switch on and give it the value of one, then it flips the value and becomes zero. The most simple way to look at a NAND gate is you draw your normal AND gate and you put a bar over the top of the two inputs. And simply done, all you have to do here is reverse the output of your AND gate truth table. And you'll notice in this truth table, it looks a little bit bigger. I've got an extra column to account for the knotted uh, A and B, which makes my NAND gate. And I'll do my inputs as normal. I'll do 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And then I do my normal AND gate, which gives me 0, 0, 0, 1, just like my AND truth table above. And then all I do is I flip it. And that gives me the result of 1, 1, 1, 0. This time with a NOT on the front of my AND gate. If both of my inputs are off, then my light is on. If switch A is off and switch B is on, then my output is on. If I put switch A on and switch B off, then my output is still on. And again, that seems to match my truth table. The same process applies for NOR. I write my normal OR out by ORing A and B using the plus symbol. Then I draw a NOT bar over the top. I can take my truth table from my A or B shown above and then I can just flip the outputs. What does the truth table for this actually look like? Well, it should just be the flipped version of the OR truth table from before. So I do my inputs as normal, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And then I do my normal ORing, anything with a 1 gets a 1. And then I flip all the last column to give me 1, 0, 0, 0. 
So in my circuit diagram, I've got a knotted OR, and the only time my light bulb will be on is if both A and B are switched off, which you can see from the circuit diagram, that is correct. If I turn switch B on, the light will go off, and if I turn switch A on as well, it will also be off. And now it's time for the last logical operator, and that is the XOR, sometimes called the exclusive OR as well. That is represented by a plus symbol in a circle. So the ruling for this is that one or the other must be present for the output to be true. And by this, basically we mean opposites. So A must be opposite to B. B must be opposite to A in order for you to get true. Confusing much? Let me show you what that looks like in a truth table. My inputs as normal, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Now remember, I'll put 0 in the top and 0 in the bottom because those two inputs are the same and we need opposites, either or. So if we have 0 and a 1, that will give us a 1. If we have 1 and a 0, that will give us a 1. So if both switches are on, my light bulb will be off. And if both switches are off, my light bulb will also be off. I need a combination of one on and one off in order to light up my bulb. Perfect. Now we have finished all of those six logical operations. Learn them, write them down, inwardly digest, be a sponge. Now we're going to look at some exam style questions. This is a 2016 exam question and basically it's a four mark truth table. You can't get any better than this in your exam. You can pause the video and have a go if you want to. I'll just quickly write the rules in here. I'm going to say A or B, any of the ones, I'll get ones. A and B, both must be one in order for me to get a one. XOR is one or the other. And what the hell is that on the end? Okay, I'm going to probably add another column because I know I can flip B and then I can do the rest of that, I think. So let's start simple. A or B, I'll get 0, 1, 1, and 1. A and B, I'll get 0, 0, 0, 1. All easy so far. A, X, or B, I'll get 0, 1, 1, 0. Then, like I said before, I'll draw another column in here and I will flip B, which will give me 1, 0, 1, 0. Then I've got an A column there. I know how to OR. I've got not B. So simply, I've just got to OR the A column with the not B column, which will give me 1, 0, 1, 1. And that's four marks. One mark for A or B, one mark for A. A and B, one mark for AX or B, and one mark for the final column, A or not B. Easy peasy. Okay, let's step it up to A2 level. This is the 2017 question from the A2 paper. First thing, do not panic. First, I'm going to check the inputs. The inputs here are A, B, and C. Now, if you've got three inputs, we're used to drawing two input tables. I'm going to show you a nifty little trick to draw a three input table. That was what our two input table looked like. All I want you to do is multiply that by two. So I'll put 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. Then in the third column, all I have to do starting at 0 is go down 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And that gives me every single output possible from my three switches. And believe it or not, that will get you one mark for just drawing all the possible outputs. The next column, I'm going to do A and B because I've got a NAND there. And I know that I can just do an AND gate and then flip it to give me NAND. So I do an AND, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. And then I flip it to become 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0 and that'll get you another mark. Once I've got a NAND B inside the brackets, I need to do a NOR with C. So remember, a NOR is a knotted OR. 
I can do an or with the C column and that will give me 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. Then all I've got to do is flip it. And that gives me 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. And again, that's worth four marks. Your marks come from your inputs, your A and B, your oring that with C, and your nor, your knotted or at the end. It's very common to watch students panic with that and to watch them crumble under the pressure of this question, but break it down to simple steps and you'll be absolutely fine. As always, thank you for watching. I've been John and it's been an absolute pleasure. Hopefully, I'll see you again in the next video.